Wendy's, McDonald's, the Golden Arches, not McDowell's. <laughs> McDonald's decided to do something kind of weird. Well, it, it, let's just take a look. I saw this. I was like, what in the hell? So this is McDonald's to close offices ahead of layoff notices. Close offices? What in the world? So, this fast food giant McDonald's is temporarily shutting its U.S. offices at the company as the company readies to let employees know about layoffs, according to a new Wall Street Journal report. It says McDonald's told U.S. employees and some international staff to work from home Monday through Wednesday so the company can communicate key decisions related to roles and staffing levels across the organization, according to an internal email sent last week. The news outlet reported the fast food chain had announced corporate reorganization efforts to up its speed and efficiency back in January and had set April 3rd as the date by which they share more de details with employees. We want to ensure the comfort and confidentiality of our people during the notification period, McDonald's said of the temporary office closures. The McDonald's layoffs come as companies across sectors move to slash jobs and cut costs amid difficult economic landscape of high interest rates, high inflation, concerns about possible recession. Several tech industry companies, including Amazon, Facebook parent company Meta, Twitter, and Microsoft have announced layoffs in recent months. McDonald's competitor Wendy's also announced restructuring and possible corporate layoffs back in January. So this article is also in the description as well, but this is what's going on. And one of the things that I wanted to mention as well is that when the Fed increases interest rates and it forces these companies to lay people off, that increases the labor pool so that there's more competition among workers. That competition among workers means that they will be willing to work for lower wages in order to get the job. So this means that these corporations will pay less for more workers. See what I mean? So that's how nefarious it is. And so this is why I say the corporate dictators are using the government to their own ends. <sighs> so there is a video that I also want to show. All right. Go, go, Power Rangers. Okay. Let's go. McDonald's reportedly planning a restructuring. The fast food giant closed all its U.S. offices temporarily this week in preparation for un incoming layoffs. And that's according to a report from the Wall Street Journal. Yahoo Finance's Brooke De Palma, she has the latest. Good morning, Jared. Well, certainly some disappointing news coming out of McDonald's this morning. Wall Street not reacting too much in opening. Share was mostly flat here, but that's right. The burger chain is reportedly planning to lay off both the U.S. and international employees this week. An internal memo obtained by Wall Street Journal. The company said employees should work from home Monday to Wednesday of this week while they deliver those staff change jobs and layoffs virtually. Now, the decision to lay off those employees virtually, part of that reason was due to this being a high travel weekend with most of their employees off. Now, employees who will be out of the office who will not have access to their computers were actually encouraged and asked to provide personal contact information in which they will be contacted if, in fact, they are impacted. Now, with this, the... So, yeah. You know what this reminds me of? You know, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a little story. Let me tell you a story. Let's, let's bring the microphone a little closer. Let me tell you a story. There once was a young man named JB. This young man named JB, this was back in 2008. In fact, January of 2008. And JB 
was working at a dinner show called Dolly Parton's Dixie Stampede Dinner Show. Yeah, I used to work there. There was one here in Orlando. And JB went to work. They had just finished the Christmas season. It was successful, right? We did five shows a day. I was working hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. Barely any breaks. We worked hard. And our numbers were up. Things were good. Right? I had moved from the kitchen before I got on dialysis to working in ticketing and sales after dialysis. So, yes, I did have a job right after dialysis, too. And we were told to go home early. Because everything was done. We had to transition over from the Christmas season back to the regular season. So you had to take down the Christmas decorations and all this and that. So once we were doing that and changing things over, we were also doing mass, you know, deep cleanings. They were doing deep cleanings in the kitchen and different areas. It was kind of... You know, we didn't have any shows that day because we were just told to just, you know, change things over. They told us, you know what, if you guys are done, you guys don't have to wait till it's time for you guys to clock out. You guys can go ahead or go home early. So that's what a lot of us did. We got sent home early. I go home. And I'm with my neighbors, my friends, and they have me over for dinner. We had spaghetti, by the way. I remember. And you know, spaghetti, you know, it's a little heavy. You know, you get the itis. You want to, you know what I'm saying? So what I did was, you know, I ate and I went back to my place and I fell asleep. And I get a call in the middle of my sleep, in the middle of my nap. And at the time, my sister-in-law was also one of my workmates. She worked there. She called me and she was in tears. And she was like, they let us go, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, I can't talk right now. I got to go. Something like that. And, and I just was like out of it. That's how out of it I was. That's how exhausted I was. So I get called back from my friends because we live right next to each other. And they go, James, are you, uh, did you just get fired? I said, no, we're just shifting over to the new, you know, regular season. We just got finished with Christmas season. They're like, no, I think you got fired. And I was like, what? So then they said, it's on the news. And I'm like, what? So I go over to their house on their TV, channel 13 news, right? Dolly Parton's Dixie Stampede is now selling its property and they are laying off all their workers. So we all got laid off at the drop of a hat because they made a business deal selling the property because they said that it was an opportunity they couldn't pass up. 20, I think it was $24 million for that property that they sold it for. Even though... We had a good year, the profits were up, and we did a good job. So that's what happened to me. So I know what it's like to be laid off. And all your workmates are laid off. And they literally had some of my coworkers, they had security come in, escort them to their locker, grab all their stuff from the locker, and escort them off the property. 
Not to mention some of the performers, because you had the horse riders and people like that, the performers as well. Some of them got transferred to either Branson or Pigeon Forge. So, yes, I know what it's like to be laid off because profit. So what McDonald's employees, what Microsoft employees, Meta employees, Twitter employees, all these employees, what they're going through, I, I know, I feel your pain. And I got a severance. But the severance covered me for maybe a month, maybe. And I was the lucky one. Some of my workmates only got a severance that covered them for two weeks. Yeah. Thanks, Jim Rule. Thank you, I guess. Thanks, Dolly. I don't know if she had a direct hand in this, but she's part owner of the company. So, yeah. That's what happened with me. So, that's why this is so important. You know? And... Guess what? How many people who are being laid off from these positions are going to accept lower wages at different positions at different companies because they got laid off and they're desperate now? So now the workforce is going to make even less. And that's how this system works. Shall we continue? We shall. company also reportedly told employees to cancel all in-person meetings with vendors and outside parties at its headquarters. But Jared, it is unclear what teams will be impacted, how large or small this impact will be. And Yahoo Finance did reach out to comment to McDonald's and received no comment. And Brooke, this comes against the larger backdrop. Walk us through what we have heard so far from the company over the course of this year. That's right. Well, let's take from a Wall Street perspective, shares are mostly flat this year, but the larger revamp is really the bigger backdrop that we're taking a look at when it comes to McDonald's. They're aiming to hone in on restaurant growth, operation efficiency, effectiveness, and innovation here. So back in January, the company announced Accelerating the Arches 2.0. That's sort of a, a revamp, a second innovation of their Accelerating the Arches 1.0. In addition to that, as part of it, they added a fourth D, that fourth D driving restaurant growth, and they also announced Accelerating the Organization ATO. Now, as part of that, CEO Chris Kimchensky sent out a memo back in January saying, quote, as part of this work, we will evaluate roles and staffing levels in parts of the organization and there will be difficult decisions uh, discussions and decisions ahead we expect to finalize and begin to communicate key decisions by April 3rd now that brings us to today the memo later on went to say that the company is divided in silos with a sensor segments and markets and that approach is what they say outdated and self-limiting. Now, this comes as that restaurant growth background is a large, large plan for 2023. The company plans to open 1,900 restaurants and new locations, that is, this year. 400 will be in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and Europe. 900 in US, uh, in China, that is. So certainly betting big there. The company also tapped the Chipotle exec who was uh, coined with innovation and growth at the company. So certainly bringing that here. And in terms of a larger macroeconomic backdrop, Chris Kamchensky said on the call that lower income consumers are trading down, spending less at their stores as inflation continues to take a toll. But McDonald's performing well this year. The company recently beat across the top and bottom line their latest quarterly results. And so certainly we'll wait to see just how large this layoff round will be and what exactly the impact will be on both its workforce and its bottom line. You know, Brooke, I just... You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I just noticed, she said they're opening a bunch of locations, but she didn't say that they were hot, how many people they were hiring. I don't know if you guys have been noticing, and some people are, of you, some of you are on Twitter, 
But there's been a lot of video of McDonald's restaurants that have nobody in them. You go in, you pick up your order, electron, your electronically order, you pick your order up that is created by machines, and it brings that out to you, and you walk out of the room. When it con when it, when they talk about a restructuring to make things more efficient, efficient, they're <laughs> they're talking about automation. And mind you, the people that they fired were mostly white collar McDonald's workers, people who work in their corporate offices. But there's something to be, to be said. I don't care if you're a white collar worker, you're still a worker. You're still a worker. You could be that person that works in, you know, and that works in the call in a call center, or you can be a person that works in an, on the offices. You're still a white collar worker now, given, you know. There are some white collar jobs that are kind of unnecessary, but there are quite a few that are still necessary. But they want to eliminate those positions and have machines or AI do that work for them instead. So guess what? People are going to be screwed. And it's sad that people are being treated this way. <sighs> Sad. I just think about their headquarters in Chicago, Illinois, and particularly, or at least in the Chicago area, and what that means for so many employees who will be remaining there. I mean, does this mean that they just have kind of a WeWork set up and say, oh, yeah, we just got this kind of McDonald's WeWork outpost that people can come into, or is it purely virtual? What, you know, how does this vastly change the structure of people who are even continuing to stay on at McDonald's? Well, Brad, to make it clear, from what I understand, the company will only close its offices, its U.S. offices, from Monday to Wednesday of this week while it does these layoffs rounds. And so while it seems like it's a hybrid workforce here, mm. those employees who are not impacted by these layoff rounds are still encouraged to work from the office once they reopen on, say, Thursday. And in addition to that, as you noted, Hamburger University, as they call their Chicago headquarters, it has such a large presence in Chicago. Chicago, and so I don't see them closing the office permanently anytime soon. All right, I would like to get <sighs> Hamburger University. Give me a break, dear God. One of my biggest questions, though, would be the workload of those workers that are still remaining. Is their workload going to increase? Because they're not hiring any more people at their offices. Meaning somebody's going to have to pick up that slack. Remember when, um, I don't know if you guys remember a few weeks back when uh, Savvy Sabs had the segment on quiet, hire, quiet hiring. Saying, oh yeah, we're going to hire more people. But then you go, eh, no, nah, you guys can all do the job. So I'm not going to hire more people because then we're saving more money. Just We're just going to have you do more work. Even though you barely can do the amount of work that you're doing now. This is Pharaoh demanding you to make more bricks without straw. No more straw. But we need straw to make bricks. No, make them without straw. Use your heads. Use your brains. By the way, last weekend, uh, the yearly play of the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston just was on. So that just came to mind. But, you know, yeah, let's my people go. Anyway, so, yeah, that's what's going on right now. Pharaoh is like, whoosh, make bricks without straw to his white collar workers. That's what we see. 
And, you know, it's just, it's sad, man. You know, the phrase from McDonald's is, I'm loving it. They say, ba da ba 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 But apparently, they definitely don't love their workers. <laughs> they do not love their workers. <sighs> I feel bad. Mm -mm. So, yeah, that's one of the stories uh, out of this. I think there was another point that I wanted to make. Um, there was another point. Um, yes, I have it here. Uh, let's go to this other article really quick. I can't get that. I got that, that tune stuck in my head. That Power Rangers tune. Do, 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 do. All right. You can tell I'm a millennial, can't you? Roger, don't you laugh at me. <laughs> I, I can hear him laughing at me right now. <laughs> Four key, key takeaways from McDonald's layoffs. So this says, in recent corporate shakeups, Amazon, Meta, and Disney have all been downsizing their workforce. Now it seems that even the iconic burger chain, which has become synonymous with fast food worldwide, is feeling the pinch as McDonald's joins the list of companies announcing layoffs that will affect hundreds of employees. As part of a much larger company restructuring, McDonald's Corporation has recently informed its employees about impending layoffs as temporary closed all of its U.S. offices this week. So it's talking about it's getting more expensive to sell fast food. So this is some of the points that I wanted to uh, point out. It says McDonald's plans to allocate up to $2.4 billion dollars towards capital expenses, which will involve the, the construction of 1,900 additional restaurants worldwide. Despite raising menu prices in response to inflation last year, McDonald's customers didn't seem to notice as foot traffic increased by 5% in 2022. According to CEO Chris Kempinski, Low income customers are spending less per visit, but are visiting McDonald's more frequently. Last year, Kempinski had predicted a mild to moderate recession in the U.S. and a deeper and longer downturn in Europe. Is raising minimum wages aren't a problem. The layoffs at McDonald's are expected to impact corporate workers more significantly compared to frontline workers who are more likely to earn minimum wages. McDonald's frontline workers are seen, or wait, McDonald's frontline workers are less vulnerable than white collar employees. There are significant shortage of workers in the fast food industry. McDonald's can't afford to reduce its workforce, but there may be some corporate roles that can be streamlined, making them more vulnerable to cuts. So just because you're in the corporate offices, doesn't mean that you're safe. Doesn't mean you're more safe than the people who work on the front lines. You know, it's crazy, man. 